to that, I need to ask you about what's happening uh, in the Valley right now. And specifically, if you could even just try to take us behind the scenes of your own actions as it relates to Parler over the last, say, 72 hours. Absolutely. Look, you know, I think it's pretty straightforward. Actions matter. Words matter in a society for the functioning of society. And that's why companies have terms of service and acceptable use policies to say, you know, what can you do? How can you use these products? And, you know, in the offline world, it's pretty obvious. You can't run into a movie theater and yell fire. You can't walk into an ice cream parlor and start shouting racist epithets and continue to expect to still be a customer of those establishments. Well, online companies are essentially doing the same thing. But what's so unique and interesting about this is, is the responsibility or this decision making has moved up the stack, if you will. It's now gone uh, to the landlord. In, in many ways. Uh, and that's something we haven't seen before. It used to be that uh, the, the manager of a store, if that's, if that's the analogy we're going to continue to use, would make a decision about who to let in the store or not. Now we're talking about whether the landlord believes that the manager of the store is responsible. Well, it's really the same concept, right? Because if a company is hosting content that is essentially doing the same thing as, uh, you know, that, that you prohibit, what do you do? And if they, uh, in good faith, are going to police that content and try to control it, that's a different story. But if they say, look, we're not going to control it, we're not going to attempt to control it, then they are responsible for the content on their site in the right. eyes of a terms of service or an acceptable use policy. What, what do you tell viewers who say, look, it, it just doesn't seem like uh, these things are being looked at in equivalent ways. There's all sorts of uh, hate speech and uh, other terrible things that go on uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, clearly on places like Signal and Telegram, which are encrypted so, so, so the, the platforms or landlords don't even know about it. Well, I think there are differences. You know, first of all, there's a difference between a company who prohibits that speech and policing it is, yes, it's difficult and it is imperfect. But if you attempt to police it, there's a difference between that and not attempting to police it or saying that that speech is welcome on that platform. The other thing I would say is doing all this uh, with all this content out in the public realm where you start to indoctrinate other people, you could sign up for uh, many of these services like Parler and within minutes be subject to this content without even looking for it. That's different than right. the private communications between a small number of people in which there is more of an expectation of privacy. What was your conversation like with the parlor team as you were um, effectively threatening them and then eventually taking them offline? Well, when we let them know that they were in violation of our terms of service and we gave them several days to migrate their service off of Twilio, they voluntarily suspended their integration with Twilio. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.